I had never heard of Henry Audio when a viewer asked me to review their DAC. Minutes later, Burgess Trant Bergeson of Henry Audio responded he thought it was a good idea. So why not? The web brought us sweet and sour. One of the sweet things is the collaboration between people from all over the world. It brought us Linux and many other open source initiatives. Like this small and affordable USB DAC. It is already the third incarnation of the DAC, which probably means loads of feedback from the community has been incorporated in the current version. If you are interested, go to the Henry Audio website and visit the community. There are literally hundreds of pages about any topic concerning this DAC. And I mean hundreds of pages on each topic. So if you got the time to spend, be my guest. I will review the DAC as an off the shelf product that works right out of the box, which in fact is what it is. If you then feel like writing alternative firmware or make hardware adjustments, please feel free. For suggestions and support, the community will be the only place to go to. The housing is simple and functional, measuring 114 by 33 by 112 mm. The front only holds the logo, the model number and the power LED. The rear has a Type-B USB input, buttons for programming and resetting, which I didn't use, and the analog outputs on RCA. That's all folks, nice and easy. The printed circuit board has lots of empty spaces, test points and places to solder print headers to. We are not going to do that and judge the DAC as is. It is powered over the same USB that takes the audio bits. The 5 volt DC from USB is locally converted to 3.3 volts by ADP151 low drop voltage regulators. For the DIYer, more power conditioning can be added here. The processing is done by the Atmel AVR32 programmable microprocessor. Two precision crystal oscillators drive the AKM4430 DAC chip that directly outputs analog signals at 2 volts max. To achieve that, charge pumps are used, formed by a collection of capacitors positioned around the DAC chip. From there, the analog audio is fed directly to the two RCA connectors. Like with the outside, there is little to tell about setting up and using the Henry Audio. Just connect a USB cable between the DAC and your digital source and connect the analog outputs to your stereo. Only if you use a Windows computer you need to download a driver from the Henry Audio website. Computers running Linux or Apple OS and network breaches I know need no driver. The rest is up to the software you will use. If you go for quality you do need a bit perfect music player and you need to bypass the mixer if that's not taken care of by the music player software you use. The fact sheet downloadable from the Henry Audio website gives a clear description. By the way, this is not unique to this DAC, all modern DACs need this approach. The sound quality a DAC offers depends partly on the quality of the input signal. I don't mean the quality of the digital encoded music, but the quality of the USB signal, timing wise and noise wise. See my video, Connecting your DAC number 2, how digital can go wrong. Let me describe the way I test USB DACs. First the Henry Audio DAC was connected to my Apple MacBook Pro. Music was played from Rune with all DSP and digital volume functions disabled. This gave a firm and deep low, a good mid range and a somewhat harsh high end. Sibilance control could be better, cymbals were edgy and violins had a tendency to harshness at high levels. The stereo image was relatively shallow. I have seen the same with other USB decks costing about the same but also with more expensive ones. It is due to the noisy and jittery signal coming from a computer 
and it's even worse when using a laptop due to the electronics that drive the screen. The cure I use is the Oldec ADQ USB isolator and an S booster power supply. The Oldec provides galvanic separation and decouples the USB power line when an external power supply is connected. By using an audio grade power supply like the S booster or Ultra Caps or at a somewhat lower level the Audiophonics LPSU25 or iFi Audio iPower, things get considerably better. I use the S booster BTOW PMP first generation. The lows remain the same. The mids opened up somewhat more, while the stereo image got more depth and focus. But the biggest difference was in the highs that cleaned up considerably. Now it's not realistic to spend almost 500 euros to have the Henry audio sound better. But you might try to use the Audiophonics LPSU25 or iFi Audio iPower by using a cable that feeds the USB signal from the computer to the DAC but cuts the power line to facilitate an external power. I actually think that Henry Audio should have such provision built in. A simple 5 volt power input connector that cuts the USB power feed. Another solution is to use a network bridge like the Allo US bridge, a small board computer based solution I reviewed earlier. Currently costing about 175 euros excluding the power supply. At about 65 euros for the mid quality power supplies I mentioned earlier. Then the Henry Audio deck really starts to shine. Mid range opens up further as does the stereo image while cymbals and strings sound more real and relaxed. For now there is a fair good power supply that is further cleaned by the Allo and a USB signal that is clocked with more precision. The US bridge can run on a wide range of players and audio bridging programs, as you can learn from the US bridge review. This is a very good combo, making fine music at a very good price. Even better sound quality was achieved when I connected the Henry Audio DAC to the SOTM SMS200 Ultra Neo network bridge. Now the stereo image is even more spacious, at about 50% of that of my Brooklyn DAC, with sibilance control and for instance cymbals are at about 60% of the Brooklyn. But to be honest, spending over 1700 euros on a bridge and then only spend 300 euros on a DAC isn't a well balanced investment. I just mentioned it to make my point on clean digital sources. The Henry Audio USB DAC 128 Mark III has practical limitations like only one input, being USB, no DSD or MQA and no external volume control. But these things are clear up front and to be honest Unless you really own a lot of DSD music, I wouldn't lose any sleep over it. DSD is great, but the choice of music is rather limited and certainly doesn't offer many popular albums. MQA is more difficult, since currently only Tidal is streaming MQA. So again, an easy choice as are the other facts. If you can live with these, it is a DAC that offers a sound quality that can grow with you. Ask Santa for a DAC for Christmas and start playing from your computer. Then later on tweak it with a network bridge and a power supply in easy affordable steps. In the end you might have spent less than when you would have bought an about equally performing streamer and you spend it in steps. If you are handy with the soldering iron you might go another route that might bring you to the same or better results for less. But I won't counsel you when problems arise. I need my time to find more interesting products like this. And if you subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media, I will keep you informed too. If you like this video, please consider supporting the channel through Patreon or PayPal. Any financial support is much appreciated and needed to keep me independent. The links are in the comments below this video in YouTube. Help me to help even more people enjoy music at home by telling your friends on the web about this channel. I am Hans Beekhuizen 
Thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.